Hi there, it's Carly from the Brain Injury Network. Um, I am here to go over with the over the fatigue tip sheet with you. So you should have your fatigue tip sheet out. This is one that we honestly give everyone that scores positive and um, has a brain injury because of the prevalence of it. So this would be in your bigger packet if you were recently given tip sheet. There, there is a packet um, if it's printed. Um, otherwise, you are looking at it online or in front of you. Okay, so let's define fatigue first. So fatigue is a continual state of mental tiredness. Fatigue can occur after physical activity, but most commonly after mental activity. Okay, so this is mental tiredness, just completely exhausted mentally. Um, so someone with a brain injury kind of has a double whammy of fatigue, so to speak. They have a primary fatigue, primary cause, which is directly from injury to the parts of the brain controlling arousal, attention, and response. Okay, so our brain is responsible for uh, keeping us alert and aroused and attending to things. And so when it gets injured, sometimes it doesn't do a great job of doing that. And then there are also secondary causes that ex exasperate fatigue. So after brain injury, individuals often report sleep disturbances. They report pain, such as headaches. Um, they have stress from trying to manage all the symptoms now of their brain injury. They have anxiety. They might seem different now than they did before their injury. And then a lot of people have depression after a brain injury. And, and so there's all these things that they are trying to keep straight that can just be really taxing on the body and on the brain, especially, right? So as I said, this is very common. We give this fatigue um, tip sheet out to all of our survivors. Um, so studies show as many as 70% of individuals with brain injury complain of fatigue. It's often called the most debilitating consequence, but it's not always understood, okay? So we do have a webinar Wednesday on this um, called Fatigue Pie. So I'm going to show you that towards the end to how you can access that recording as well. So some things to look for if you um, struggle with fatigue, uh, withdrawn and short answers. So that's kind of when we get kind of snippy with people maybe, or just, just a little short with people. Um, we might see some slowed responses in thinking. Um, delayed processing is also a part of brain injury, and so it can be hard to tell if it's that or if it's fatigue, but you might notice some slowed responses or slowed thinking. Uh, a loss of appetite is common when individuals are fatigued. Um, slower movement and speech. They might have a dull tone, so they might speak slower, move slower. Um, they might have irritability, anxiety, and crying episodes um, if they're very fatigued after brain injury, or if you are. And then increased forgetfulness. Um, oftentimes, our survivors get accused of being lazy, and they have a lack of motivation and interest in things that they maybe were liked to do before their injury. And so um, that also is a sign of overwhelming fatigue. So what are we gonna do about it? So this is the back page. These are accommodations. Accommodations are tiny things that we can do to enhance learning or enhance just quality of life, in my opinion. Um, so uh, some accommodations for fatigue, organize routines around times of the day you feel your best. So you should have a daily routine or as close to one as you can, but you should try to schedule things around when you feel the best. And typically that's going to be in the morning, depending on the person. But um, but yeah, scheduling like your appointments for the morning, um, scheduling, you know, your important meetings for times of the day when you feel, um, feel well rested and not so fatigued. Okay. So um, another accommodation is when you first start feeling tired, stop and rest. So don't try to push through it. You're, you're going to get overly tired um, if you do that. So we want you at the first sign of feeling tired, we want you to stop and rest, even if it's just for five to 10 minutes. Just take a break, set an alarm if you're worried you're going to fall asleep. Okay. Um, another accommodation, you can reduce exposure to bright lights and loud noises. So um, sunglasses, baseball caps, um headphones earbuds there's all kinds of ways we can can help that um 
and we can avoid, you know, places where these things might be, right? Um, we don't want you to completely avoid things to the point of like not going outside of your home, but there are things we can choose, you know, maybe not going to a heavy metal rock concert on a Sunday night when you have to work on Monday morning, right? So if you are going to go to that heavy metal rock concert, maybe go on Saturday nights so that you have Sunday to rest if you don't work on Sunday, okay? So just thinking about things and strategically planning them to make more sense for your body. Um, one big thing I think I hope you take away from this is to schedule rest periods throughout your day. So we always schedule our time on, right? We schedule, you know, one o'clock doctor's appointment, three o'clock phone call with grandma or whoever. We can also schedule our time off too. So we have that, you know, doctor appointment at one and the call with grandma at two. So from two to two 30, we can rest, right? Or we can take a break. We can do something, um, you know, rejuvenate rejuvenating some self-care take a bath something like that but you you can schedule in rest too uh, like you schedule time on you can schedule time off as well um keeping your home and work environments uncluttered look at that cloth look at that I mean it's all the same stuff it's just so much nicer to look at isn't it when it's all nice and stacked so neat um I think of this um there's several Netflix shows out there, Marie Kondo, and there's Getting Organized, the home edit. Um, if you need some visuals or some help on how to organize, but um, the after side is, is me. That's my jam. I love to organize and do things like that and have everything all lined up and nice. And um, it's very satisfying. And when um, outer calm leads to inner calm, right? So when our spaces around us are calm and orderly, then ideally we are calm and orderly so might be worth giving a try um another accommodation is to use assistive technology um, and mechanical aids as needed um referrals for this we always give to north dakota assistive technology um they are an amazing group of, of people they have locations in fargo and bismarck where you can tour smart homes and, and try out some of them the things the thing is with them, they don't sell you the tool, but they will let you trial it. And then they will also tell you like where to buy it and where to find the best deal. They're the experts. So, I mean, you know, some of it might even be just purchasing things from Amazon, but let them be the judge of what you should purchase because they are the experts and the gurus in this area and can really be helpful. Um, so if you need assistance with getting that referral, just let me know and I can, I can send that through and we can get you set up. But um, also, don't let just their Fargo and Bismarck locations discourage you because they will serve the whole state and they can meet with you virtually and they're willing to do some travel and to set up appointments with you as well. Um, another accommodation for fatigue is to reduce stress. So take that time for self-care, take a bath, um, do deep breathing, do some painting. I personally love to do paint by numbers. So, uh, and um yeah, so when I'm feeling stressed, I'll maybe take some time and just put on some tunes and light a candle and do some paint by number or yoga. Yoga, too, can be very help or helpful. Love your brain. Remember, is a great um, brain injury friendly yoga and meditation resource. Loveyourbrain.com. Um, another, excuse me. Another accommodation is to avoid or limit alcohol use. We don't want to say you can't do can't use alcohol at all, but you really want to limit it. And you also want to be careful because um, there is a fairly high percentage of people that develop a habit of substance abuse after brain injury because our impulses are lowered. So if you are going to have alcohol, just try to do so in moderation. And then ensure you are getting plenty of sleep. There is um, a lot of sleep hygiene things we can do, right? Um, and so we have a whole separate uh, webinar, little mini mini um, video on sleep. So take 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 in that one if you can. Um, you can talk to your provider about the raw medication complaint fatigue. So there can be some meds that you could try um, if you would like. But again, that's a choice for you and your provider to make. And then um, talk to your provider if fatigue affects your daily functioning. If you are unable to get your daily stuff done, then it's probably time to talk to someone, um, to a professional about that and how we can manage that fatigue effects better. Um, and DBIN, we do have a sleep time tracker um, that's available on our website. 
um, if you drop down under resources, brain injury resources, <clears throat> sometimes it can be nice to, to keep track of our sleep and um, see where we're at and see how many interruptions we have. There are tons of apps out there that can also do this as well if you're not a pen and paper person. And then that um, fatigue, pie, what, fatigue pie webinar Wednesday that we have, um, it was recorded in December of 2019, but it's all still very relevant. So it's Rebecca Quinn, our director, talking about um, the barriers fatigue causes to individuals and some strategies to help overcome those. So I would also give that a listen to, too, if fatigue is something that you are struggling with. Um, our, as always, you can reach out to us at any time um, at 855-866-1884 or check out the website ndbin.org for more info. Thanks for listening. See you soon.